Hi, and welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We're looking at international trade. And just to remind you, we're making the small country assumption where the home country is a price taker on the world market. And let's have a look again at the situation of exports. We have the quantity of LPG on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. And let's start off by looking at autarky where there is no international trade, so the equilibrium is where the domestic supply and domestic demand cross at a price of P0 and Q0. We will have exports if the world price is above the domestic price. In that situation, given the world price, PW, domestic producers will sell QS, domestic consumers will buy QD, and the difference between those, the difference between domestic supply and domestic demand, that's simply given by the level of exports. Now, it immediately follows that because domestic consumers face a higher price and buy less, they're worse off by opening the market up to international trade. But domestic producers, they also get a higher price and they sell more, they're better off by opening up the domestic market to international trade. But how much better off or worse off are they? We need to do some welfare economics. In particular, we want to ask the question, does international trade and exporting benefit the domestic country overall? We start by using our standard approach in welfare economics, put in all the construction lines, and then label everything that could possibly be relevant. And so we've labelled all the relevant areas here from A through to H. Let's start off by analysing the situation in autarky. Well, in that situation, we know that consumers initially consume Q0 and pay P0. So consumer surplus is the area under the demand curve, above the price consumers pay, up to the quantity they purchase. It's area A plus B plus C. What about for producers? Well, producer surplus initially is the area above the supply curve, up to the price that producers receive, up to the amount they sell. So it's area E and F. So total welfare initially is A plus B plus C plus E plus F. And here we've got it on our table Consumer surplus is A plus B plus C. Producer surplus is E plus F. We've got no government revenue or external benefits. So the total surplus is A plus B plus C plus E plus F. That's a situation without trade or in autarky. OK, so let's now look at the situation when we have trade. Let's start off with the producers first. Remember, the producers get a higher price, PW, and they sell QS units. So the producer surplus with trade is the area above the supply curve, up to the price producers receive, and up to the quantity that producers sell. So it's area B, C, D, E, and F. And we can put that on our table. Which is exactly what we've done here. Producer surplus is B plus C plus D plus E plus F. Notice that producer surplus has gone up by B plus C plus D. What about for consumers? Well, they now consume QD and pay a higher price PW. So consumer surplus, area under demand, above price consumers pay, up to quantity consumers consume, that's only given by area A now. So we can put that on our table. Notice that consumer surplus has fallen from A plus B plus C down to A. So the change to consumers is a loss of consumer surplus. They've lost B plus C. What about for producers? Well, for producers, they have gained B plus C plus D. They've gone from E plus F to B plus C plus D plus E plus F. So the producer surplus has gained B plus C plus D. And if we look at our total surplus, it's pretty clear that our total surplus has gone up by area D. It's gone from A plus B plus C plus E plus F. It's gone out to be 
A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. So we've gained area D. Now that's the mechanics of consumer and producer surplus. The economics is to interpret what these areas mean. So let's look at that. Let's start off thinking about area B. What does this area represent? Well, remember that before international trade, consumers were consuming Q0. After international trade, they still consume something, they consume QD. So QD are units, it's tons of LPG, that consumers were buying before trade was allowed, and they're buying after trade was allowed. But the difference is, for consumers, that they're buying those QD units at a higher price, PW rather than P0. So area B represents the increased price consumers pay on the LPG that they bought before and they bought after trade was allowed. This is simply an increase in price, so area B is just a straight transfer from the buyers to the sellers. Now, let's look at area C. Area C refers to the units that consumers used to buy before trade was allowed, these Q0 units, that they no longer buy once there is international trade. It refers to these units that are in the gap between Q0 and QD. Notice that area C represents the consumer surplus that buyers used to get from these Q0 minus QD units. They used to get consumer surplus given by the area under the demand curve, above the price they paid, over these QD to Q0 units. But once there's international trade, they no longer get that surplus because they no longer buy those units. Where has the surplus gone? Well, to see that, let me extend the line from Q0 up through area D. And let me focus on this orange shaded area here, which is F and C, and part of area D. What does that orange shaded area represent? Well, the units between Q0 and QD used to be sold domestically. They created producer surplus given by area F, the area under the price, above the supply curve, for those units. But, those units are still produced with international trade, they're just not sold domestically. So these units between Q0 and QD are now being sold at a higher price PW. So the producer surplus associated with those units is now given by the entire orange area, given by the old producer surplus plus area C plus this part of area D, under the price, above supply, for those units. So what's happened to area C? It's been transferred across to the producers. Not only has it been transferred across, though, but it's now creating even more producer surplus on those units that we used to sell domestically. We're now, as a nation, getting more benefit from those units, because we used to sell them domestically and consumers valued them, given by the height of the demand curve, now we sell them overseas and overseas they're worth more. Overseas buyers are willing to pay PW for them, a price that domestic consumers weren't willing to pay. The international price that we get for those units is above the marginal value of domestic consumption. So on these units between QD and Q0, total surplus has gone up. Yes, consumers have lost area C, but producers have gained an extra bit. Part of area D, this triangle, representing extra producer surplus by selling those units that we used to sell domestically, selling them overseas and getting a higher price. But that's not the only gain that the producers get 
by accessing world markets. They also get this extra blue bit here. What does the blue bit refer to? Well, this refers to the sales of units between QS and Q0. These units were units that we previously didn't sell. They weren't sold in Australia prior to opening up for international trade. So this has increased domestic production. It's now worthwhile to produce those extra units and to sell them at the world price because they create producer surplus given by this blue shaded area. So overall, whilst consumers have lost area B, that's a transfer to producers, and they've lost area C, that's also a transfer to producers, producers have gained the entire area D, and that's what we gain as a nation. It's got two parts, the yellow part, which was the extra surplus we make on units we used to sell domestically, but now sell overseas. Extra surplus because the world price is above the domestic value. The domestic value is given by the height of the demand curve. And the second bit, the blue bit, which is the extra production domestically that we now sell overseas at a price PW, and that's a price that's above the marginal cost of production so these create a value to Australia, to the domestic country, of the blue area. And the total gain from trade is the blue plus yellow area, area D. So now we can summarise the effects of opening up Australia to trade in LPG, a product that we're going to export because the world price is above the domestic price. We've got a number of conclusions. The first conclusion is that opening up to exports is going to make consumers worse off. But we knew that before. But now we can say why they're going to be made worse off and by how much. They're going to be made worse off because they buy less of a product. And so that means they're going to lose area C. And they're going to pay more for what they still do buy. So that means they're going to lose area B. But at the same time, opening up for exports is going to make domestic producers better off. Well, we knew that, but now we know why they're better off and by how much. They're better off by area B, which is a transfer from domestic consumers. That just represents that domestic consumers are buying the same old stuff but paying a higher price. But they also, the producers also get area C and area D. Area C represents a transfer from producers to producers from consumers, but Area D represents entirely new gains that Australia can make through exporting. The gains outweigh the loss by Area D. So Area D represents our gains from international trade. Consumers will be worse off, and they'll oppose the opening up to international trade, but producers will be better off. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.